Watching birds at Monterey Bay, California, we saw these curlews finding food in the sand with their long skinny bills. When this seagull crashed their party, it found a crab to eat. This individual seemed better provided than this swirling flock of seagulls. They seem highly excited about something below in the water. They're seeking a meal and somehow not flying into one another as they fly in these formations. This gull seemed to be content to be away from all that swirling action. To Liz and me, it seemed to know what it was doing. It confidently advanced into the water, not having to compete with other gulls for food. And food is exactly what it came up with. But what is this animal it's eating? We thought we saw that it was a crab at first. Then immediately I announced that it was a crawfish. But looking closer, we see that it's neither of those. It's some kind of crustacean, though. The gull swallowed it whole, then went back in the water and instantly came up with another one. Far from the maddening crowd, this seagull seems to have found the mother load of this shrimpy, crawfishy creature, and it didn't mind dining alone. With its slightly curved beak, the gull tears the prey apart. It seems to prefer the main body of this creature. She carried the crustacean out of the advancing water and ate it whole. Then she wasted no time going back into the water and again came up with the same creature. This is not a gull that needs to learn how to fish. I've often seen seagulls steal food from the mouth of a flock member. Perhaps that's why this one chooses to dine alone. This one was so successful in finding food we began to worry that it would overeat, like eat itself sick. Well, maybe it's a mom who'll regurgitate some of this food for her chick, hidden away somewhere. Other seagulls were close by, but none of them bothered her, nor did they seem as successful in finding food. This seagull led our eyes to a group of them, assembled on the beach. Seagulls are expert flyers. Their wings are long in comparison to their bodies, and the shape is a factor, the tapered ends helping them make sharp turns in the air. Looking down on the bay, these seagulls had much to be excited about. The water was teeming with life, like this jelly. I know I was excited. This was way larger than the jellies I'd seen before in Alaska. Now our eyes were drawn to this bright creature. Isn't this the same crustacean that the seagull was gorging on earlier? I suppose that people living in Monterey know the name of this crustacean. There were certainly a lot of them in the water. Let's watch what this one does. Then we saw this. Thousands if not millions of these tiny immature fish. They swam together just under the surface of the water, clustered in schools, all swimming in the same direction. And right there among them was the orange thing. Perhaps they were food for the crustaceans. So we were seeing a food chain right before our eyes. We weren't the only ones seeing the large mats of tiny fish and the orange creature. This grebe was finding plenty of food to dive for. It looks as if these fish still had external gills. They were of little interest to this curlew. The curlew's very long skinny curved beak is an adaptation for getting a totally different kind of meal. The curlew seeks tiny creatures living in the sand. Back to the solitary seagull that's such a successful hunter. We expected to see her eat more of those orange creatures. Again she advanced out into the bay, 
We wondered how many had she eaten while we were focused on other life in the bay. Suddenly she flew up into the air. She did what seagulls do best. She flew. When a gull flies over the sea, it's called a seagull. When it flies over the bay, is it called a bagel? There are many species of seagulls, all of them having incredible flying ability. No wonder writer Richard Bach chose this bird for his work, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. Plenty of inspiration here.